Hi, my name is Matt Barber. Welcome to the Hisense 2020 CES booth. One of the first products we're going to look at today is our prototype 8K television. The model that we see here is an 85 inch 8K television, so there's over 33 million pixels to deliver the highest resolution possible in LCD panels today. Uh, right now, as I said, it is a prototype, so we're still working on it, but it is going to be quantum dot. It does have 8K AI uh, upscaling and a pretty unique 4.2.2 multi-channel speaker system uh, where there are actually four speakers spread around the frame of the television and built into the underneath display cabinet. In this particular unit, it will come with this secondary uh, stand with an LED display on it that is actually able to be integrated into things such as uh, your smart home. So you can actually control your smart home from that LED display as well as showcase things like uh, music lyrics or obviously information about your favorite artists, uh, bring up movies that you might want to actually display on the television, so a very versatile kind of secondary LED display uh, to complement the 8K screen. Another prototype that we have at CES 2020 for Hisense is our 8K ULED XD television. Hey. Now, so this is a dual layer. This is dual layer. So when you hear dual layer, or excuse me, dual cell technology and XD, they're talking about the exact same thing. And what we've done with this technology is taken a 4K panel and a 2K panel and physically bonded them together. Now there is still an LED backlight panel and with that LED backlight panel and the 2K panel, we are creating a level of contrast never seen before in LCD technology. The 2K panel acts as luminance control for the LED backlight that gives us OLED level blacks while maintaining LED brightness levels, basically bringing the best of both worlds of OLED and LCD together into one product. Is it Again, true there's a little bit loss of brightness? I'm because sorry? Because of the second layer, there's maybe some loss of brightness a little bit. So that has been a, a, a common question, um, in my humble opinion, given that some of our units have over a thousand nits peak brightness. If there is any loss of light, you can't tell. So this is going to be over a thousand nits. Now the 75 inch that we're seeing here in the 8K. Uh, again, being a prototype, it hasn't been set yet. We're saying on our placard over here that it is a thousand nits, uh, but when it comes to market, could be more. Could be more. The, the one that was before was not dual layer, it might be brighter. Correct. No? Correct. It might be a uh, 2,000 meters. Um, they did not give us a nit count for it, so I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. But uh, it was definitely coming to market, uh, or is it already on market? Well, the and that's the 4K interesting. XD. That's a very interesting question, and here's why. In uh, late summer of 2019, Hisense uh, actually released a dual cell television in domestic market China, therefore becoming the first company in the world to deliver dual cell technology to the consumer um, in our ULED XD brand. So, that being said, a lot of consumers are asking, well, when is this coming to the US? Right. Well, it's the 65 XD 9G is tentatively slated for Q3, Q4 of this year. And this has the exact same technology as we saw with the 75 inch over there. Uh, but again, this is the 4K, 2K concept as opposed to the 8K concept. Q3, Q4. Yes, sir. So you're ramping up mass production because it's not easy to mass produce something like dual cell. Maybe that's why it's not ready yet for, for global. Well, I mean, we are talking about LCD panels. So the, the creation of the panels themselves is fairly common nowadays since the commoditization of the technology. Yeah. The bonding of it doesn't take That's that me. long, but it's it's the alignment. It's the alignment that is, is key and is crucial there. But we are at a point now where uh, we feel like we're able to not only do it fairly quickly, but also be able to get the image that you see here and done the correctly. What, what are the nits? This one's going to be a thousand nits peak brightness. So Quantum dot, thousand nits, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Two million zones. So the two, two million, million zones. Two million, two million on the second cell. Absolutely. So, and, and again, I don't want to confuse anyone and I don't want people to, to misunderstand. So the, there is an LED backlight panel in there. In the 65 inch, that LED backlight panel is broken into 132 local dimming zones. Now the 2K panel is turned into essentially a 2 million zone luminance control for that backlight panel. So in that regard you have two million dimming zones one of the best ways to kind of illustrate that is our demo right over here 
Now what we see here is, is basically a full image, uh, just like we saw uh, at the front end of the 65X90. And on the right hand side, you have essentially the color panel turned off. So what we're showing you here is the 1080p or the 2K panel luminance control prior to hitting the quantum dot layer as well as the, the 4K resolution layer. So, so you don't have any quantum dot on this one or you turned them off? We've turned everything off that's in front of the 2K panel. So that what we're showing you is two million dimming zones, essentially creating the image twice, once in grayscale and then once in color, again, to create that 150,000 to one contrast ratio. Uh, when you talk about the 132 uh, LED zones behind, mm -hmm. yes. would it help having mini LED also to have like thousands of them or no? Would it help? Yes. Uh, anytime you have more control over the light, you're going to have more control over your contrast ratio. Um, but right now what we're working with are the standard LEDs. You also do mini LED? Uh, we are, I mean, we've light. been working on it, but it's not anything that we brought to CES this year. These look amazing. So thank you. You say Q3. Q3, no chance, Q4, uh, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, and what do you think is going to be the pricing? Is going to be definitely more affordable than OLEDs? Absolutely. It's going to be more affordable. As I said, it's going to bring you the best of both worlds between OLED and LED. What we're doing as far as pricing is concerned is actually going to wait and get the pricing level of 65 inch OLEDs at that time frame look at what the landscape is, and then come in hundreds of dollars less than what OLEDs were going for at that time. Now, that being said, we're probably looking at something sub $2,000. Can you do half of OLED price? Depends on which model OLED you're looking at. Uh, do you I think mean, there's five and $6,000 OLEDs out there, so it just really depends. A to B comparisons without cheating in anything, do, do consumers actually think this is actually better than OLED? Well, I think we're still in the point where we're educating consumers of what this technology is. So I don't know that we've really got enough sample size to be able to say that consumers believe that this technology is going to uh, overperform or take over OLED. Personally, I believe that it will. I think that this delivers a comparable contrast uh, to what OLED does without any of the fallbacks. There's no potential for burn in here and the value is there. Potentially double the brightness compared to OLED. Absolutely. And uh, uh, quantum dots, OLEDs don't do yes, that sir. yet. So we have quantum colors, dot in here. Better colors than OLED potentially. Yeah. And definitely better price hopefully. Better pricing, definitely, because as I said, when it comes to market, we're going to make sure that we are undercutting OLED uh, by several hundred dollars. Is there any chance you can uh, you can do a 4K on the second layer? We're actually working on that. Um, last year, when we debuted this technology uh, in a non-finished form, uh, one of the things that we had in the booth was a 4K to 4K. So it is something that we're working on. That was a prototype. Uh, we're seeing that uh, it's taking a little bit more of an effort to line it up pixel to pixel uh, for a 4K to 4K panel. Uh, so we're making sure that that is a mature product before we actually bring it out to market. And by Q3, you might have even more nits. Who knows? Absolutely. All right. Uh, that's, and this is going to be 75? So we can, yeah, we actually have the ability to do this technology in a 75, a 98. Uh, we can actually move this technology cross category. We have a professional 32 inch display unit if you'd like to see it. Uh, this one is also 98. Yeah, both of these are the same unit, 98 inches. Yeah. We even brought the dual cell technology to the computer monitoring world. So this also prototype model, um, but it is 4K. It is using our dual cell technology. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have much information on it other than that we are featuring our XD dual cell technology in other categories other than uh, consumer television panels. So you're going big time on dual layer. You Absolutely. think this is definitely... I think that this huge. is a, a very innovative technology that you're not seeing from other manufacturers. I'm excited at the fact that Hisense has been the first company in the world to bring this to market. Um, but we're innovators in all, all kinds of technologies, not just LED panels. Uh, we're innovators in laser television. We're innovators in smart platforms. I mean, we're one of the few companies in the world that creates their own video chipset. Uh, we do a lot of different things and, and I'm very proud of each one of them. So um, here you have a demo showing the 
hundred zone uh, standard standard system that's on the market right now. So and thousand yeah. zone, which is mini LED, right? Kind mm -hmm. of thousands of zone and millions. And the best expression of, of this sort of AB contrast like we have in this particular demo is the one that we looked at earlier that shows it as it would be in the commercial market, as it would be in your home, uh, in that it's creating the full 2K grayscale image prior to the 4K uh, color resolution scale, uh, panel. rather. All right. And that demo? This what demo is kind of showcasing the different contrast levels. So here we're looking at 5,000 to 1, here we're looking at 10,000 to one, and then finally the full 150,000 to one. All right, uh, so still have six months to wait for the XD. Yes. Something like that. And what else are you showing in the booth? So laser television uh, is a, a huge one for us. For anyone that has the opportunity, you should check out uh, our press conference where uh, Dr. Liu spoke at length about the different uh, new iterations of laser television that we're bringing to market. Uh, the, the ones that we're looking at here, the one to our left uh, is the 120L10E1. So this particular laser television has been on the US market now since uh, about April of last year. Uh, and this is one of our dual color laser televisions. So at 120 inch size, we're probably about, I don't know, a foot away from the back wall. So you can get incredibly close to the screen with ultra short throw projection technology that's only able to be done through lasers. So with lasers, you don't have the problems that you typically do with an LED bulb style projection like you had in rear projection or like you had in long throw. So you don't have to do a replacement of the bulb every couple of years and have to uh, essentially ha incur that recurring maintenance fee to maintain the brightness of the unit. These lasers that we put in all of our laser televisions will run about 25,000 on hours. So you're getting about the lifespan that you would out of a typical LED panel. So they have that longevity of life that consumers expect. With this particular unit, <coughs> excuse me, you're getting the, the full cadre. It's everything that an LED television would come to have. So multiple HDMI inputs, HDMI ARC, fiber optic out, it's smart, uh, it comes with a uh, voice remote that has quick keys for your smart apps such as Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime. Um, and as I said, this model's been out since about April uh, and we've got it in a couple of retailers. You can purchase this through Amazon.com or through BestBuy.com. What's the price? Uh, depending on the retailer. So you're looking anywhere between ten and $11,000 between those two retailers. So this is a very bright so short throw. Absolutely, 3,000 3, lumens. Uh, it's 4K, it's HDR. Uh, again, you got all the connectivity in the back. There are 14 Harman Kardon speakers built into the front panel. We give you the subwoofer as well to give you the complete visual and audio experience. And Honestly, for us, our vision of laser television is that the future of large screen television watching and cinema watching is laser television. When you look at comparable 100 inch and up LED televisions that are very expensive, use up a lot of energy, um, really hard to move around if you need to move around with them, these solve all of those problems. So you're big fans of uh, TI DLP? Absolutely. So every one of our laser televisions uh, uses DLP technology. We are using TI chips in them uh, to be able to create uh, the display that you see. It's one of the ways that we get incredible motion in our laser televisions that actually surpasses uh, the motion capabilities of LCD and OLED. Uh, so very excited about that. This unit is the L5. It's a 100 inch unit. Uh, that is going to be coming out in April of this year. So this model is a single uh, single laser design uh, at 100 inches and is going to be price pointed at about $6,000 when it comes out in April. The Probably the biggest differentiator between it and the other lasers that we've had in the past is this is the first laser television that we're bringing to market that has the Android operating system. We realize that the, the ultra short throw projection uh, category is still new uh, and that customers need uh, a little bit of familiarity. Uh, so in this particular model, we wanted to bring one of the most popular smart platforms into our laser projector so to, to kind of to help the, boost the cost the has to do with laser tech and it has to do with the short throw lens. That's why the price is a little bit 
still high on these. Do you have any lower price uh, laser? Or? Not at the moment, no. Not at the moment. So What's when the demo in here? So Sonic screen laser and hopefully, okay, great. So this technology uh, that we're showcasing here has a little bit less to do with the laser TV and more with the screen. So the Sonic screen laser television consists of a 88 inch screen that has three sets of transducers connected to the rear of the panel. So I've got two here, two here, and two here. There are speaker wires run from those transducers to our stereo receiver, in effect, making the screen the center, right, and left channel speaker. So the audio is physically coming from the projection screen. Now, off to the side here, you can see that we can actually take this technology and also use it as satellite speakers. So the same tech we're using in the screen, we're using in our satellite speakers here. I feel some vibration on the side here. So, how how does that uh, how does that sound compared to like uh, what the OLEDs are doing with getting sound through the? So it's it's kind of the same concept. So we're using that piezoelectric uh, uh, sound technology, and this particular screen, because of its 88 inch size, you're looking at about 91 dB. You're looking at 40 to 20,000 hertz, and you're looking at about a 2.1, 2.8% distortion. Um, as opposed to in other technologies, you're looking closer to around 10 or 12. So you're getting big sound, low end sound, high end, uh, full frequency range, um, and very, very little distortion. That's sweet. What do, you, what do you honestly think about the black levels on the, on the DLP uh, laser projection? How good does it get? I honestly don't know the answer to, to how black it can get. Um, a lot of that has to do with the gain of the projection screen that you're using. Most of the screens that we use... high quality screen. Yeah, and, and most of the screens that we use have about a 0.4 gain on them. Um, so, you know, just take that for what it's worth. Um, but at the same time, with this, this kind of display technology can't really be compared to OLED. It can't be compared to LCD because, again, it's, it's two completely different kinds of displays. If you're looking for a cinematic experience, one that's immersive, one that uh, is going to be cost effective, then the laser TV is really the best way to go. Now the models that we're looking at here are the L9 series. These are part of our trichoma, uh, trichroma lineup. Uh, the 75 inch that we're looking at here um, has a three laser system. So it's still using a DLP chip, but there's no color wheel, there's no phosphorus, there's no extra fragmenting of the blue laser to create the full color spectrum. We're actually using pure light to create our color gamut. Now, that being said, the Trichroma series of laser televisions are the only televisions in the world and only displays in the world that have the ability to hit the BT2020 color spectrum, which is beyond what the human eye can really perceive. But again, it just tells you to the extent by which we're able to create color with laser television. Uh, depending on the screen that you use, uh, it's, it, it affects how the light is reflected hopefully perfectly in the right angle so, so you get a nice experience from where you're sitting. Every single laser television that, that we produce and bundle with a screen, and in most scenarios we do bundle with a screen, there is an element to each of those projector screens called a Fresnel Air, which uh, essentially is an ambient light rejection technology. So every screen that we have is ambient light rejecting. What that does for the consumer is it takes light coming from above, so any ambient light from a sunlight or an overhead light, it sees that and redirects it away from the line of sight of the, of the viewer. And it sees, at the same time, the light coming from the angle of throw of the projector and re redirects it 90 degrees out to the viewer. So in effect, what we're doing is making sure that the only light that you see, or the majority of the light that you see at least, is coming directly from the television and not getting any ambient light degradation that can mess up things like brightness, color, and motion. And it's and super clarity. sharp. There's no uh, messing around with the sharpness, right? In, it, in the no. way that the screen is designed? No, it's really designed to take the preciseness that the lasers are capable of creating and what the DLP chip is able to display and make that 
the only thing that you see uh, as the viewer. To keep that crisp 4K detail that all of our laser televisions are, uh, and for those that are running uh, HDR in its various forms, getting the full contrast that you can get out of that. For example, the 100 inch that we're looking at right over here is actually capable of both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos certification. So we can get the benefits of HDR, Dolby Vision HDR out of the 100 inch uh, trichroma laser television, uh, as well as that super wide color gamut uh, that we get from the three laser system. So is it still gonna be something like a 6,000 or how much? Oh, I have no idea how much this one's going to be. Our 150 inch came out in domestic market China last year, uh, did really well. Uh, but as far as these two 2020 models, I'm not sure about the ETA for uh, mass distribution. And Hisense doesn't do any rear projection, it's only short throw. It's not uh, like rear projector, right? To my knowledge, and, and again, it's pretty limited to what we have here at CES as well as uh, what we bring to market in the US. No, we don't do rear projection. All right. Uh, but also, another way to put it is that the filmmaker is always designing his movies for cinema. So yes. the projector is a more natural way to see what the director intended. Absolutely. They don't design for TVs. No, not at all. And we take that into consideration and when it's, when you look at something like Trichroma and, and when you think about the different color palettes and, and the different ways that directors want to bring their, their vision to life, you've got to give them, from a display perspective, the widest palette you possibly can. Not only from the color side of it, but from the contrast side. And when it comes to the viewing experiences of the, of the viewer and the audience, you want to get as close to that cinematic experience as you can, laser handles that, especially trichroma laser TV. But uh, why are they mostly being sold uh, in the US market? There's not so much laser TVs in Europe. Is well, you may not see them in Europe, but uh, if, again, if you take a, uh, if you have the opportunity to watch the press conference for Monday, um, the 80-inch laser television uh, is one of, if not the most uh, sold television in the China market. So there is an appetite for this technology, uh, and we are trying very hard and, and, and very vigorously to grow that ultra short throw projection market here in the US so that everyone can experience the advantage of laser technology. So they look amazing, totally amazing, but on TV you're doing a pretty good job. Is oh, absolutely. You, like, how, is it, how is it going with the, are you like in the top three in the US? Or uh, we are actually or in 2019 the top five manufacturer uh, and that, well, we're the top five in units. So we went from uh, seventh place to fifth place in a year, uh, which is just organic in USA, growth right? in the US, uh, in units. And that's strictly organic growth. We really did not get a big push uh, in Black Friday to assist with that. And that is the kind of growth that you want to have in the US market for sustainability. So we're very excited to have made that push. And, and we've got our sights on, on further uh, so that means, placement. Uh, CS 2021, you'll be number three. Uh, 2021, I'm gonna be number one. I don't wanna, I just wanna skip, skip them skip all. Just go right to the top. So that means uh, to do that, you have to provide uh, the best value for the price. Well, and that's what we're known for. I mean, the, our our primary pillars of of what we hold our standards to are quality, performance, innovation, and value. And we understand that, especially in the U.S., if you don't deliver on those four pillars, then it's going to be very hard to have much success. I think they look awesome. Uh, looking forward to hopefully very affordable dual layers. When you talk about 2000 kind of dollars. Sub less, 2000. Sub 2000. Sub 2000. Be nice to see them at sub 1000. Maybe you'll hey, try to work towards that, right? Who knows? We'll keep working on it. All right.